Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another interesting concept in the world of Ohm's law, resistance, resistivity, voltages, currents, and so forth, and it's called the EMF. EMF stands for electromotive force, and it's a very old term that was used long time ago when it was thought that the voltage of a battery or the voltage of power supply was a force pushing charges through the circuit. And it's really not that far-fetched, and the name is somewhat appropriate. It's the electromotive force, the force that pushes charges through the circuit. But another concept here is that the electromotive force and the voltage across the battery terminals are not always the same. See, assuming that this is the battery right here, and we have the positive end and the negative end, which would then push charges or current through the circuit, the terminal ends don't always nece necessarily have the same value as the electromotive force of the battery itself. It actually depends on how much resistance is connected to the battery. And the example here gives us an idea of how that works. It says, what is the potential of the battery? So in other words, what is the voltage across the two terminals of the battery and the current through the circuit when it's connected up like this? And then what will it be? So what will the new values for the voltage across the battery and the current through the circuit be when we replace the 4 ohm resistor by a 999 ohm resistor? All right, so normally you would say you go to the store, you buy a 10 volt battery, I don't know if they have 10 volt batteries, but let's say they do, and you plug in your circuit and you hook it up to your resistance, normally you'll say, oh, then it looks something like this. Here's my battery, and here's my 4 ohm resistor, and I bought a 10 volt battery, so the voltage across the battery is 10 volts, and the resistance is equal to 4 ohms, and then using Ohm's law, you would expect that the current I is equal to V over R, which is equal to 10 volts divided by 4 ohms, which would be 2.5 amps. But in actuality, that is not what's going to happen. Because batteries, just like any power supply, will have some sort of internal resistance. And if you took a voltmeter and measured the voltage across the battery, you'd ex probably ex find something very different. So let's find out here. And the reason is because we have an internal resistance that actually adds to the total resistance of the circuit. So in this case, the total resistance, R total, is equal to the resistance of the low resistor, that what we put onto the circuit, plus the internal resistance. So in actuality, the total resistance of the circuit, in this case, because the internal resistance here is 4 ohms plus 1 ohm, which is equal to 5 ohms. And so what would happen is if you were to calculate the current or measure the current in the circuit, you'd get this instead. I actual is equal to V divided by R total, which is equal to 10 volts divided by uh, 5 ohms, which is only 2 amps. And what voltage would you actually measure if you were to measure the voltage across the battery? What happens is you're going to have what we call an internal voltage drop because of the internal resistance. So what will happen is that the voltage measured, not the voltage that's on the, on the, volt, on the uh, battery, is going to be equal to the amount of the EMF minus the voltage drop across the internal resistance. And the voltage drop across any resistance is always the current times the resistance. So the voltage drop would be equal to E minus I times small r. So that's really the voltage that's driving the, um, uh, the, the total voltage across the battery. So that's what would give you the whole voltage across the battery. Now since we have a 2 amp current in there, so we can plug that in here. So this is equal to the 10 volts, which was advertised minus the current, which is 2 amps, times the internal resistance, which is 1 ohm. And so in actuality, you'll get a 10 volt minus 2 volt reading, or only an 8 volt reading across the battery. So the voltage measured is equal to 8 volts. And so therefore, if you then use Ohm's law, so I would then be equal to the voltage that's measured, and if we then in ignore the internal resistance because we're ready to care of it right here, and you divide that by the resistance that we add to the circuit, then this would be 8 volts divided by 4 ohms, which is equal to 2 amps, which is the actual correct value 
that we should have gotten if we took into account the internal resistance. And the 2.5 amps ignoring internal resistance will give us the wrong answer. Now notice how that changes. So in this particular case, since the resistance we have to the circuit is relatively small and not that much different from the internal resistance, there will be a big effect on the voltage across the battery. But now what happens, and let me grab a different color, what happens if we replace the resistor by a 999 ohm resistor? So now we can say, using the same calculations here, that the actual current, I actual, is now going to be equal to the EMF of 10 volts divided by the total resistance, which would be 999 ohms plus 1 ohm. And so that will be equal to 10 volts divided by 1,000 ohms. And so that would be equal to 0 0.01 amp. And now you can see that the voltage drop across the internal resistance will be very small because now the current is very small. So now we can say that the uh, V measured across the battery, which is equal to the EMF that drives the battery, minus the voltage drop, which is I times the internal resistance IR, which is this right here, and so that would be equal to 10 volts, minus the current, which is 0 0.01 amps, times internal resistance of 1 ohms, and so the, in, the uh, volt measured is 10 volts minus 0 0.01 volt, which is 9.99 .99 volts. So you can see that with batteries or any power supplies, the internal resistance becomes significant if the load resistor, the resistor you add to the battery, is small compared to the internal resistance and is basically insignificant when the load resistor we put on there is much, much bigger than the internal resistance. Then we have a very small voltage drop across the battery, and then you can see that the volts you measure across the terminals of the battery is virtually the same as the EMF. And that's an excellent example of how you work with EMF and internal resistance in simple circuits like this.